What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk through some different things we can do in order to simulate curtains or drapes inside of SketchUp using the extension Clothworks. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so one thing to note is you are going to need the paid version of Clothworks. I will link to that in the notes down below, but you need that in order to be able to move the pens around. So what I wanted to do is just kind of talk through the progression of creating some hanging drapes um, across an opening inside of SketchUp. So I'm going to start by just modeling out an opening. So we'll just draw a wall right here. We'll draw an opening right here. Well, we'll just extrude this to give it a little bit of thickness. So just a simple opening. And so we'll go ahead and use this for right now. And so what I want to do is I want to start by drawing out the size of my drapes. All right, so I'm gonna draw a rectangle just by using the rectangle tool. So tap the R key. I'm gonna tap the left arrow key to lock me to the screen axis. Then I'm just gonna draw something like this. It just needs to be bigger than our opening for right now. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna move it off my wall just a little bit using the move tool. And now we're ready to go. And so I'm gonna model this out as a few different progressions. So I'm gonna take this base piece and I'm just gonna kind of copy it a few different times. I'm gonna go ahead and group this. And uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this over here. And let's start by just creating a very simple simulation. So the way cloth works works is you need to take an object like this plane. You need to right click on it with that extension enabled and you need to make it a cloth. And so as of right now, um, it's not really going to be a very good simulation, right? If we were to click play, it's just going to kind of like fall down. So we don't necessarily want that. I'm going to turn on hidden geometry right now. And I'm actually going to undo this because when we first ran that simulation, what this did is this came through here and it uh, split this up with a hidden piece of geometry right there. And it's going to mess up our subdivision. Um, but so the first thing we need to do is we need to pin it, right? So I'm gonna add a pin right here using the add pin tool and click again and add a pin over here. So now what we have is a very simple drape, right? And it's still not gonna do what we want it to do. So if we click on play, it's at least gonna hang here and notice how this is a live simulation, but notice how it's basically acting like if we hung like a piece of cardboard or something like that, which is not what we want um, because it's just gonna be very stiff and it's not gonna give us a very good cloth simulation. So what we need to do is, I'm gonna undo out of that, we need to add some geometric detail to this object. And so we could come through here and do that ourselves, um, but there's some tools built in that we can use that are gonna work a little bit better. So to start off with our cloth object, I'm gonna right click, go down to Clothworks, and under my cloth, I want to apply a grid. And so what a grid is going to do is a grid is going to split this object up and give it more geometric detail. So let's start by clicking on Apply Quadrilateral Grid. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to set this in here with a certain resolution. The resolution is telling us how much detail it's going to add. Well, in this situation, let's go with something really low resolution. So let's type in 200, click on OK. So now, if we were to click play, notice how we get a little bit better result. Let's go ahead and hide our hidden geometry in here for a second. So notice how I can click on these pins and I can move them around. Well, when I move this pin around, notice how this is starting to kind of like fall and act like a drape, right? Like not a ton, but a little bit. So it's basically like if we had pinned something up and then move the pins closer together, then uh, this is gonna simulate basically the way a cloth would work. And it's not very good right now, we're gonna work on that, but we're getting closer. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add some more pins. And so all we need to do to add pins is I'm actually gonna use divide copy mode. So I'm just gonna erase out this pin. Then I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode. So I'm gonna tap the M key, single click and tap the control key, move my mouse over here. And then I'm gonna type in divided by 10 and hit the enter key. Well, what that's done is that's created 10 copies of this pin inside of our model, right? So now if I was to run this simulation like this, I could select all of these pins and move them around. And notice how this is acting a little bit more like a piece of cloth. Not great, but a little bit. And so what we could do to bunch this up is we could click on this red 
box right here. Well, if I bring that together, what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring all of your cloth together and kind of simulate um, cloth coming together, but you're getting this really weird result, right? So you're getting all of this cloth kind of like running over itself and everything else. So we need to fix that and also add some more detail. But let's start by changing this so that it collides with itself. So we're gonna click in our toggle UI settings and within our UI settings, we're just gonna go into our cloth and we're going to go down and click on the button for self collide. And so when you click on the button for self collide, what that means is that means that this object is going to collide with itself when we run that simulation. So now, and let's go ahead and move these off of the wall a little bit. So let's play our simulation. We'll take all of these and select them and just kind of move them off the wall just a little so that you don't have them like intersecting with that wall. We can always move it back later. And we're just going to scale this back together again. Well, now you're going to notice here at the top that this cloth is at least trying to self collide, right? But we're still getting this really weird result. And the reason we're getting this weird result is because we have more pins in here than we have detail points. So what this is doing is this is pin this all together, but our detail points, um, we don't have enough geometric detail in here for this to act the way that we want it to act. So let's abandon this and let's start a new version of this. I'm just gonna create a copy, move this over, and we'll go ahead and we'll add some pins to this. We'll make this a cloth as well. So right click, cloth works, make cloth. We'll add a pin here. And then before we do this, let's go ahead and let's add some more detail. So within cloth works, let's go to cloth, apply quadrilateral grid for right now. Let's bump our resolution up to something like 2000. So now if you look at this, what this did is this basically came through here and it added a lot more detail than we had on our other piece, right? So there's a lot more detail in here. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow this to simulate this more realistically. So now let's do the same thing. Where I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode. Divide this by 10 and hit the enter key. And then we'll select our cloth, go up to toggle UI, Make sure we turn on self collide and then we can run our simulation. So now what we want to do is we want to click on this toggle play button right here. Again, it's going to ask if we just want to simulate the selected cloth and I'm going to say yes, because I don't want it simulating over here anymore. We can just take these, we can just scale them together. So when we scale them together, notice how with more detail, you're getting a much better simulation of actual cloth in here. So now this actually looks like cloth. And so this is bunching up at the top like you would expect it to do. And so in addition to it bunching up at the top, now we can click and drag this over in order to move this to the side. And notice how this is going to follow along with us. So this is following along with us and we get a fairly accurate depiction of the way that cloth would work right here. And so from here, we're getting pretty close Probably what I want to do in this situation is I even want to try out one of the more detailed subdivision options. So we'll go ahead and stop this simulation. We'll just leave this one as is and we'll create one more. So we'll take this, move tool in copy mode. We'll right click and make this a cloth. Right click again. And in this case, Instead of selecting quadrilateral grid, let's try the adaptive grid. So what the adaptive grid is going to do is this is gonna take a parameter that you set and it's gonna to try to subdivide this based on an adaptive algorithm. So if I click on okay, what you're gonna notice is you get a much more detailed subdivision that's in here. It looks a little bit weird, but we're gonna test it out anyway. So what this has done is I think this goes through and it just subdivides it over and over again, but we have much more detailed geometry in here. So one other thing I also wanna do is I also wanna draw a floor. So we're just gonna draw a rectangle right here. I'm gonna right click on this, reverse faces. I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna make it a group and then I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna make this a collider. So what that means is that means that this is something that my cloth is going to collide with. We're gonna do the same thing with this wall. We'll just right click, cloth works, make collider. So now 
our cloth will actually run into this wall and run into this floor. And we'll go ahead, I'm not sure if this is gonna mess everything up or not, so we'll just try it on the fly. I'm gonna scale this up just a little bit because we're gonna move this down and see if it'll like pile up on the floor a little bit. So we'll move this up so it's above the ground and then let's add our pins really quickly. So just add pin here, move tool in copy mode, divided by 10 and we're good to go. One thing to be aware of is do know that this is going to take longer to simulate because it has a lot more geometry in it than this does over here. So just be aware that that's gonna happen. If you have a slower computer, maybe you don't want this to quite this level of detail. But let's go ahead and select this, click on the play button and say yes. And one thing you might wanna do is you might wanna turn off your hidden geometry. Then I'm just gonna take this whole thing I'm going to scale it together like this. Oh, and one thing I forgot to do on this piece of cloth is let's make sure that we turn on self collide. So now we'll click play, simulate our cloth, and we'll just select these, scale them together. I tend to go slow because if you go really fast with this add on, sometimes you get some things that kind of like overlap with each other and do some weird stuff. So, what I'm going to do. I'm just going to bring this together and then I'm going to move it down a little bit. Again, don't go too fast. And then we're just going to move this over using this arrow. So we'll let this catch up. And so one thing we can do because this is kind of covering up half of our opening, you can come in here and you can actually click and drag some of this cloth if you want to. You don't want to do a ton of this just because a lot of the time when you do this, the cloth starts bunching up on itself and kind of overlapping. Um, the self collisions should help with that some, but you can use this to kind of like fine adjust some of this cloth. Just be aware that that can get you some kind of weird results when you do this. So maybe I will take this end Kind of drag it over here. And then we're going to call this good. So I'm going to click on stop and take a look at this. And what this has done is this has created a fairly realistic depiction of what cloth might look like had you taken a bunch of rings and kind of bunched them up together like this. All right, so one issue that you might run into here is you currently don't have any materials applied to this drape, right? So there's currently no materials in here. And that's a problem if you're trying to render something. And so what we need to do is we need to go back and apply a material. So one of the cool things about this is you can apply a material after the fact. And so one of the things you might run into is if, if you come in here and try to apply like one of the fabric textures, to my window, like this one, notice how it doesn't look very good, right? So nothing's mapped right. You get these like weird triangles in here, unless you're into this design, at which point you're done. But um, what we want to do is we want to go back and we want to apply that texture beforehand. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to untoggle our drape. And the first thing you may notice is if you untoggle and toggle, doesn't do anything. So what we need to do instead is we're just going to go back to our default material. I'm just going to click on this. We're going to untoggle drape. We want to double click inside of this object. So that's going to be really important. We want to double click inside of this object and apply this directly to this face, right? So when you apply this directly to this face and then click back out of here, you can click on this object, re-click on drape. Notice how now this extension goes through and it actually applies this material properly to this face. So you can use this method in order to create that material and then Clothworks will update the, um, the texture coordinates properly inside of SketchUp. So you can use this in order to create a drape that actually has a material applied to it um, that you can then render out as well. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Have you tried Clothworks? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.